Hello, my name is Amber Barrow and I'm with the Charlie Elliott Wildlife Center. And today I want to talk to you about one of Georgia's coolest native reptiles that we have here. I have with me today the gopher tortoise or scientifically known as Gopharis polyphemus. Now this tortoise here, she is very, very special to the state of Georgia. Now the gopher tortoise is what we call our state reptile. Now, for reptiles, do you know what makes a reptile a reptile? Well, if you were thinking about it, and if you said that she had scales, you would be correct. She is coated in all scales, all the way in her face, her feet, even her shell is coated in scales. Now, also, if you said that she was cold-blooded, or what we call exothermic, someone who loves to be out in the sun, basking all the time, she has to use the outside environment to be able to warm her body, you would also be correct. And another thing that makes reptiles reptiles is the ability to like special eggs. The eggs are not as hard as a chicken eggs, they're not full of calcium, but she doesn't have to lay them in the water like a frog. They're leathery eggs for the gopher tortoise. Now, tortoises and turtles, they're, they're similar. I know that you think that this could be a gopher turtle, but it's actually a gopher tortoise. Now, the rule of thumb to always remember is tortoises are turtles, but not every turtle is a tortoise. Now, tortoises, she is actually designed for living all on the land majority. And the way you can tell is by looking at those beautiful feet. See those feet right here? Those aren't designed for swimming like some of your other turtles, like your freshwater pond sliders or even your sea turtles. What she is designed to do is she's designed to dig all in the landscape. Now in Georgia, she is native to an area known as the coastal plain ecosystem. Now the coastal plain area is an area, if you drew a line between Augusta, Macon, and Columbus and went southward, you would find beautiful sandy soil for this girl to dig in. And that's what she loves to dig in, is those sandy soil areas of the coastal plain. It's dominated by beautiful longleaf pine trees. It's got very, very hot summers, got mild winters, and it's full of all kinds of wildlife. Now, it's also very dependent to have fire in the coastal plain. Now, a gopher tortoise, no, it's an awesome animal, but it cannot resist fire. So what it does is it digs these burrows that are about six feet deep into the ground and up to 15 feet long, and it hides out in those burrows whenever a fire goes through. Now, fire is actually a good thing in these ecosystems, and the gopher tortoise actually provides a home for not only herself, but other animals when a fire comes through. It's been documented. Over 300 different animals love to use this burrow to be able to have a home whenever a fire runs through. Some of those animals could include what kinds of things? Well, some animals, you might be mammals if you're thinking of mammals like your foxes, coyotes, mice and shrews. They would definitely love it. Other snakes like the eastern indigo snake, pine snake, king snake, corn snake, they would be using the burrows too. If you said amphibians like frogs, there's actually a special frog called a gopher frog that loves gopher tortoise burrows. And even if you said insects, you would also be correct because there are many, many insects that love to utilize the gopher tortoise burrows. Now this girl, as you can see, has a crack on her shell. Now, she got a crack because where she lives at is not only inhabited by gopher tortoises and those 300 other animals, but it's also inhabited by humans. And sometimes humans and gopher tortoises come in contact with one another. And in her case, she accidentally got run over by a car. And road fatalities or road accidents do sometimes happen. But when it happens, there are many conservationists that document those numbers, but also come out and help them because in Georgia, the gopher tortoise is actually considered a threatened species. The threatened species means that there are low enough numbers where we need to watch out between becoming endangered. Now, conservation groups like the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, which is where Charlie Elliott's with, but and other nature groups, we work to manage the forest, manage the coastal plain area, so things like gopher tortoises can thrive and increase in their numbers significantly. We want to be able to bring the gopher tortoise back to its original numbers. Now, 
we got a lot of work ahead of us, but she is definitely on a good road to recovery. She's doing very well in the state of Georgia. Now, if you want to help out the gopher tortoise, one of the ways that you can help the gopher tortoise if you're a dull or teacher is you can actually buy one of our wildlife license plates. The wildlife license plates that you see sometimes on people's cars, the ones that say maybe go wild, have a bald eagle on them, those are actually wildlife plates that help out animals such as the gopher tortoise here. So all the money that is used for that goes back to wildlife conservation. Another way that you can help out the gopher tortoise is just learning more about the sand hills ecosystem, longleaf pine trees, or just the coastal plain overall. And another thing to remember is native animals in Georgia, any of them, they can need to just be left alone and have a good time wild out in nature. The more you help out your ecosystem and just enjoy nature from a conservation standpoint, the more you're helping out animals such as the gopher tortoise. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little bit, and I know our gopher tortoise, as you can see, she's having a wonderful time getting to know you very, very well. And I hope that we are able to share some more facts and knowledge with you. Again, I am Amber Barrow, and I hope that you got something really cool about the gopher tortoise and longleaf pine ecosystems in the coastal plain.